This is a Socialist News and Views special interview. I'm Nick Schillingford coming to you from the Urban Cabin Studios in South Minneapolis with this special interview. So on Socialist News and Views, we let folks introduce themselves. Do you want to just uh, let listeners know who you are? Uh, my name is Greg Gibbs, and I write under the pen name C.G. Gibbs. Uh, I have a lot of other pen names that I use on the Internet, but uh, that's the one for uh, writing. And uh, I live in Minneapolis. I've lived in Chicago and uh, uh, L.A. and a few uh, uh, and in Europe. So that's and uh, in Ely, Minnesota, too, and in wow. Duluth. So uh, some of those scenes are are taken from, uh, you know, my knowledge of these towns, because these towns play a role in this book that we're talking about, Factory Days. Yeah, and you've been doing, uh, you know, uh, some things, organizing and things like that for, for a while. You've been around. I've been in about six unions and a, uh, maybe an equal number of revolutionary socialist groups. And now I'm uh, I just work for a bookstore. Yeah. A left wing bookstore. So that's the way to do books. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you hinted at, I just finished uh, reading your novel, Factory Days. OK. Um, do you want to just talk about the book? Uh, you talked about some of the locations. Do you want to just talk about the book and then also, you know. What was your inspiration to write, uh, you know, Factory Days, to write that book, uh, uh, you know, how that all came together? Well, you know, uh, part any book, and people will lie about this, but any book <laughs> is partly based on their own experience. It's also based on their own imagination, and it's also based on their research. You know, people write science fiction, and it's not because they've been to outer space. That's you true. know, and people think especially the the kind of uh, bourgeois literary set and the uh, the programs like the Iowa, Iowa Writers Workshop say, write for what you know. Well, <laughs> a lot of people don't know much, you know? <laughs> they can, yeah. You can't write from your own experience. And a lot of times your own experience is boring as heck. Mm. But, uh, but uh, in this case, it's a blending of those three things. Um, I, 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 my, my inspiration is proletarian literature. And if you don't know about proletarian literature, you, that's acceptable because it's been crushed and disappeared. Right. It used to be very popular in the forties and the thirties. Uh, you know, I could read you a list of famous writers and then you're going to, you're going to go, what happened to those people? Because we, we have kind of, maybe I'd call uh, revolutionary literature, socialist literature, proletarian literature, maybe a few writers in the United States are doing that, but very few. So it's an unfilled niche. Mm. So who, uh, if you were going to name off a couple of those writers, who, who, who are Okay, who, I'm going to read you a list. Yeah, let's Upton, hear it. I want to hear it. Upton Sinclair, John Steinbeck, John Dos Passos, Richard Wright, Jack London, Mike Gold, Jack Conroy, Maradol Lesueur, B. Traven, Agnes Smedley, Theodore Dreiser, James T. Farrell, Tilly Olson, Edward Dahlberg, Nelson Algren. That's I have, my, uh, I have my free book table. I have a, a bunch of those on there, but definitely not all of them. So I'll have to I'll go through this later and I'll I'll, I'll jot those down to make sure I'm uh, covering all the important stuff. Um, so you so just to, just into the little little bit of like how it all take, came together again. Um, so what was going on when you actually when you wrote the book and then like how did how long did you spend I, writing that one writing that well one book it took a that? long time I was working full time okay this mm. is one of the the leisure class can write easier right right you know and I, I was working in factories for about twenty years so obviously that factory in the book is one I worked at mm. and now whether I'm in the book or not is another <laughs> matter. Is that the lead character Malachi is not me. Mm. He's he's a buddy that I knew. Sure. Yeah, but of course I changed him, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. He 
And a lot of the people in the book are based on real people. Because you don't have to imagine people. You just <laughs> have to know people, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this is this is where you get inspiration. These are real workers, real people. You know, uh, and I... The, the writing is based on, I, I didn't make it excessively literary, okay? Right. You know, I tried to keep a, a blend of, of making it literary, but it's not a magnificent version of English literature. It's not James Joyce, okay? Even right. though James <laughs> Joyce influenced me in the, what you mentioned as the uh, stream of consciousness stuff mm -hmm. in the book, where Malachi, like all of us, has an we have an idea of uh, you know we pay attention to what's going on, but we're also having our own thoughts, mm -hmm. and sometimes those can cross, right? And you're thinking about something, and then something real is happening in the real world, and you're like, oh, right. oh, oh, which is it? Right. But he he has some pretty angry thoughts, and then he has a lot of fantasies. He, mm -hmm. he lives in fantasies, and so I introduce those a stream of consciousness and this is influenced by james joyce this is a modernist technique it's not so much seen in proletarian literature but i think it's very factual mm. because real people do this right i mean i do it i i, I think everybody does you know you, mm -hmm. you're thinking things you can be sitting here listening to somebody and you're thinking about something else or something that has happened and you're reflecting on it you know and he does that. And so that's kind of the poetic uh, interjections that he's doing. So James Joyce, and I actually read Finnegan's Wake and <laughs> and, and Ulysses. So uh, whether I understood everything or so, not, yeah. I did not. So you've so got any, some of the cred there. Yeah. So, the, but, so this came out in 2016. So how long were you working on this book for? I, 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 I don't want to admit it probably took all, probably eight, eight years okay i mean i don't and, think there's anything i don't I, I think every different writers write at different speeds i think well, some if, writers are writing multiple books for like their whole life just about you know working on little pieces of, of things and trying to pull things together so you just never know some people just write one book and then they and, and then it's a like, great oh, great book yes that was yep. too much work and i gotta take it, <laughs> take it easy for a while you know it's i think everybody writes differently so do you go through a lot of uh uh i have uh, really i, I have your... a spreadsheet to keep track of the characters yeah because if you're not writing in a you know every day and and i couldn't because i'm you know working right i had to have a spreadsheet to keep track of right. things i had to have a spreadsheet to keep track of the events that were happening and i still use that i'm right i finished a second book which took much less time Okay. Because I was retired and I'm sure. writing a third book, but I use this same method where you use this, you use these things to keep track of what's going on. Otherwise, sure. you know, nobody can remember all this. It, no. You're creating something, but if it's this, the more sprawling it is, mm. <laughs> the more <laughs> right. it gets, you know, it's like an octopus. It gets out yep. of control. So, yep. Do you, do you have a, do you have a section you want to read from the book? I, you know, I saw that uh, chapter 11 YMC is kind of a short one, but I mean, is there yeah, something okay. you've read well, before? It's got, you... it's got some stream of consciousness in it, it has some swearing and okay. it, it has a, a little bit of crudeness because Malachi is a crude guy. Sure. Um, I'm, I fashioned him as an everyman. American okay. everyman or a okay. United States citizen everyman. It's not America. Well, yeah. So, there's uh he he's very familiar with a lot of guys I know. They're interested in sex, drinking, motorcycles, you know, right. <laughs> military right. things, guns. Oh yeah. And I think and a lot of people is, are familiar with this this kind of man. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is, you know, it's a little bit me too, but uh this guy is he's really into this, but he's he's also not he's not stupid, he's class conscious and uh and that's the key thing here, I think. So, okay, you want me to read uh, YMCA at the YMCA? You'll notice there's some there's nuggets in this book which people don't know unless they're paying attention. But there's references to Les Misérables in this book. There's references to Uncle Tom's Cabin. There's references to many rock and roll songs. 
Mm. And there's references to uh, it can't happen here, and about which is by uh, yeah yeah that a Minnesota writer <laughs> right up uh, so Sinclair Lewis so yes you you there's little nuggets in here and there's also quotes from different writers that are embedded in the text uh, and I remember one a, a man with a golden arm book by James T. Farrell, I think. And again, my, if I don't remember things, it's typical. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it the, these are embedded in the text. And so the title of this thing is called At the YMCA. But of course, there's a famous wedding song called YMCA, which we all, all know. Okay. Yep. Okay, this is chapter 11. I made the chapters short because People, you know, when you're reading, especially nowadays, it's very difficult to feel like you're making progress. Mm. So if you get through a chapter, you feel like you got somewhere. That's progress. <laughs> exactly. Right. If you have a chapter that's 50 pages long, you feel like, when is this chapter going to be over? <laughs> okay. So these are, and I also made the text a little larger because if you want, want to read a book and the text is six point type, which and I've read a lot of books like that, it's very disturbing and older people especially can't read that kind of sh stuff anymore anyway i was gonna say that yeah i've been trying to find more uh larger print books but it's hard yeah. to find it's hard to find good ones you know yeah and and you know all the classics micro print you know and, mm -hmm. and you know so hopefully you don't have to read any classics yep uh okay at the ymca this is he's basically been kicked out of his apartment and lost his job so I, I'm throwing everything at this guy, all the things that actually happened to people. The next day, Maliki called the Y to see if he could move in right away, and they said yes. He had not paid his last month's rent in the, his old dump, and the landlord was already hounding him. Although you weren't supposed to do it like that, Maliki figured the guy would try to take his damage deposit anyway, so he's just going to get a jump on the landlord. The landlords always tried to take the deposits, even when the apartments were in clean, reasonable shape. It was Chicago, after all. And actually, that happened to Minneapolis, too. Anyway, Malachi packed his couple of cardboard boxes full of rummage sale dishes and pots and pans, toaster oven, gun and gun accessories, magazines, videos, his TV and videotape player, several black plastic bags of clothes and bedding, Mostly jeans, T-shirts, tennis shoes, and winter clothing stuff for Chicago winters. He loaded up the 72 Crown Vic and drove to the Y in Skokie, his new home. It had all taken only a few hours. Uh, sure, Mr. Corrigan. Ding, ding, ping, 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 ping. Hello, welcome to the VoiceVail system of the Federal Training Program in conjunction with DuPage Community Technical College. Please dial the extension of the party whom you are calling. If you do not know the name of the party, please select from this list by pressing the keys on your keypad for the first three letters of the party's name. If you do not know the name of your party, please dial zero. If you do not have a touchtone phone, please also dial zero. Bing. Due to unusually heavy call volume, there will be a longer than usual wait. Thank you. Music played in the background, some pop tunes from the 50s without lyrics. Fucking motherfuckers. Malachi put a pot of water on his hot place, plate, then pressed on. He looked through a stack of bills and junk mail, while the TV ran quietly in his one room. He shaved all the while balancing the black telephone and its long wire under his chin. Then he switched it to the other side to complete his face. The DuPage Community Technical College is proud of its role in bringing practical education and higher wages to our program recipients. We have programs now in machinist, electronics, tech, HVAC, and other skilled trades. If you would like a brochure, please leave your name and number by dialing one. Otherwise, stay on the line and an operator will assist you. More music. Malachi sat down to watch television. It looked like some people were going to duke it out on a talk show. Yeah, there's Jerry. Malachi was hoping for some nudity or cleavage, at least, sad to say. 
The DuPage Community Technical College is located on rolling woodlands in the western metro area. And the city of Glen Ellen has a diverse student body and enrolls 15,000 students at any one time. Day and evening classes are available. If you'd like more information about courses, please dial two or stay on the line. An operator will assist you. More music. <clears throat> this time, Lawrence Welk or some big band started playing. Maka, you looked at a magazine you got at the Y Library downstairs. This conversation may be monitored for training purposes. The DuPage community. Hello, my name's Rachel. How may I help you? Maliki was startled to hear a non-recorded voice. Oh, he wasn't altogether sure if it was real. That sure is a pretty name, Rachel. Are you a recording? No, sir. Okay, well, anyway, I want to enroll in the machinist training program for laid off workers. And I was wondering if any funds are available now, any government funds. Sir, let me check. Your name is Maliki Omais O'Corrigan. Social 402 25 37 89. Were you laid off? Where were you laid off? Pill Pigeon International. When? Well, it would be on September 30 pretty soon. That's why I'll be officially laid off, I'm told. Say, I already told you people this information each week for the last three. Don't you have it already? Don't you write this down? Sir, we have to make sure who we are talking to. Okay. Why? Our policy, sorry. Now I see that the program is still unfunded. We do not know when it will become funded. Please call back at another time, would you? I'll think about it. Thanks. Maliki put down the phone for nothing. The cord of which was wound around his neck like a vine. Fuck. Then he turned to the TV again and tried to make out what was going on through the mute sound. Sometimes TV was better that way. This is the... Uh, stream of consciousness. What me worry? It's in another text form. What me worry, madman? Bleach the bones, tones, lie on a rack, jack, end the veil, stale, getting old, getting bold, getting sold, getting told, getting out of town, jack, jackass. Would like to twist some neck around some necktie, break somebody down into their component parts, like you break down on M16. Where's the Harley? Where's the biker chick? Where's the dickhead? Believe I'd like to dust my nose or get hosed or dozed. Except there's no money for the honey, no rain for the plane, no plan for the man. Stink up the midway, fill a room, shit in the can, take up space. Suicidal ideation, idealization, a generation of homogenization, degradation, white and black, and word, on the American concrete plantation. Segregation of the classifications, class stratification, dead presidents and live narrations. Revenge of the stratifications, no satisfaction. All right. Yeah, that's, uh, I think we've all been with the uh, wonderful hold experience like you had there. <laughs> I was just on it to uh, get through to Walgreens the other day for uh, one of my residents for the work I do as a nurse. And uh, it was on, it says, the only thing it says is that there's more than three people ahead of you. And after it said that, like the 20th time, we're like, I'm thinking like, how many more than three ahead of me are there? <laughs> you know, it's like, eventually it said, it, take? it said there's two, eventually it switched to there's two ahead of you. And I was like, oh, okay, it really is going to change when there's, you know, I thought it's just going to be three ahead of three or more ahead of me for, for the rest of my life or something. But um, <laughs> that's, uh, I had one thing where it said there was like 20 people ahead of me or something on one call that I made. So I just, I hang that up right away. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's not going to, that's not going to happen. So you, you talked a little bit about the stream of consciousness pieces about the modern um, uh, writing style. And so this is kind of the, 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 the thinking of the, uh, of the main character, things that are going through their head and kind of mixing with the, uh, uh, with the reality. Did you, um, were you writing is, that? Were you writing all those as you were kind of like writing through the book? Did, yeah, did you kind no, of in each you, place, you yeah, I and... put it in there. And you'll notice they, they get lesser and lesser as he gets less angry and gets away from his, a little less angry and gets away right. from his job. He There's less and less interior monologues. Um, and it's, it's uh, I mean, it's a tactic that's used uh, in, in a, a modernist style and it's called modernism and and it's it's something i mean modern literary 
uh, programs push this, but they push a lot of other kind of styles. I, I call them the literary mafia. Yeah. And and th these are the people at the Star Tribune, our local newspaper, the people at NPR, our local mm. radio station, the people at the Fitzgerald Theater where they have right. these talks by writers. And they they really spe they specialize, even stream of consciousness is a little too woozy for them. So they just yeah. like memoirs. They like kind of family stories. They like romances. They like genre fiction. Uh, they, they push kind of middle class, I'd say middle class fiction. Okay, mm. that's their main acts. And um, the, 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 uh, Nguyen, the guy who wrote uh, The Sympathizer, agrees with me. I've talked with him. Uh, and he hates these schools that train you how to be a writer. Mm. And if you if you know anything about literature, you know, most writers have not gone through a, a school. Right. <laughs> they Faulkner was a mail clerk, you right. know, at the University of Ox or Oxford, uh, Oxford, sorry, in Oxford, University of Mississippi. And and uh, Harper Lee was a was a ticket agent at, at an airline in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these people didn't go through. And so what happens is this kind of homogenization. And I've been trying to find good writers that have come out of these writer schools. And I didn't go to one, obviously. So it's, but this isn't just resentment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is, this, I, and I found one good book, a proletarian book by a guy from a, a, a writer school. The rest mm. of them are, are very, I don't know. They're just, uh, they're, they're kind of like a, a stamped, stamped mm. out Homogenized, uh, stories. Like said, yeah. yeah. Homogenous. And that story was uh, I, I I'm I'm blanking on the name now, but uh, it's been reviewed on the Mayday Books blog. It's about steel uh, living in a, a steel town in southern Ohio, but it's not That's... hillbilly elegy <laughs> <laughs> by that fraud, <clears throat> J.D. Vance. So you yeah, so you I know you said it, and I was I think I was kind of talking at the same time. So those sections. They came as you were writing the the piece, or you put them in afterwards. Yeah, no, I just they just came out. Yeah, they just come the out. Where, okay. What he's curious. thinking right at the moment, how angry sure, sure, he is, sure. or how many fa his fantasy. He wants to be a rich guy, you know. Sometimes right, he right. wants to meet all the beautiful women, you know. Mm -hmm. These are all <laughs> fantasies of certain kind of guys. And so, and you he, know, this a, a big chunk of this takes place in or you know in uh, Chicago area. Um, and you've been in the Chicago area. Um, yeah, I lived in Chicago for 13 years. And and you've been here in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, and you've been up north. Um, yep. You know, so what's your, um, so how long ago did you move to the Twin Cities? I, I, I was, I lived in the Twin Cities, and then I left for Chicago for 13 years, and then I came back. 13 years, okay. And I lived in L.A. for a little while, but I lost my job everything i owned <laughs> so what's anyway. the so what's the so you know if you were kind of saying you know what are the what did you notice is the big differences between here and chicago this isn't in the well chicago just well you curious. know people people who don't live in other towns you know a lot of people in minnesota don't go anywhere okay right. and you know and so they don't know that there's even regional differences in the united states they don't go to, down south Right. Except maybe Florida to Disney World or right, some right. beach at in you know somewhere uh, fake, yeah. Yeah, so some some place like that. People in Chicago are much more open than people in Minneapolis. Mm. They're much more kind of loud, aggressive, uh, you know, kind of more people oriented. People in Minnesota are more closed off, family oriented, more careful, more nice <laughs> yeah right right minnesota you know, nice is not actually nice That's yeah the, yeah well sometimes it is nice you know it beats, i mean sort of some guy they're, they're polite the they're polite <laughs> yeah they're way, polite they're okay. not necessarily <laughs> i think a lot of people that use the minnesota nice from other parts of the midwest are don't really think of it as that nice yeah uh, yeah they think like, it's kind of it's kind sub -aggressive of aggressive uh, or something yeah, yeah yeah passive aggressive i think yeah yeah peace and um but chicago is a different a different story it's a tough town to to live in and even i think i i couldn't live in it anymore mm. i i 
you know, it was a rough town to live in. And it, it, it's uh, it's not for the faint of heart. You know, yeah. people are worried about crime mm. in Minneapolis. Well, yeah, but mm -hmm. but you want to look at Chicago, it's a different story, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these things, prices are higher. Transport's right. better. They got a good train system. They so do. that's that L is great. And uh, you know, it's a beautiful lake and all that stuff. But anyway, so, so he his story and then, and then as you go up towards northern Minnesota, does it just get more and more uh, you know, closed off, insulated, or how how does that progress? Well, a small town in Ely, there's two kinds of people in Ely now, but back in the day. There was one kind of person and you were if you hadn't lived in either for 40 years, you were a stranger. Right. You know, this right. is the way a lot of small towns are. I've lived in small towns and 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 he sees that when he goes, you know, I I don't know. Do you want me to lay out the whole uh, sketch of the plot of this book? If you want to. Yeah, go ahead. OK, well, this is a guy who works in a factory, electronics factory for a big outfit that is re really Reuters. And if you know anything about the history of Reuters, you know who owns it, what they're early, how they got started with a pigeon transport during World War I. Anyway, so you work for Reuters, but it's hidden, um, you know, as literature does. It, it's, right. a, it's a facade over reality, right? But he, he gets, he gets, he loses he, he loses his girlfriend he gets fired several times he he gets into a personal thing with with a boss mm -hmm. and he tries to kill that boss okay so this is this is a guy who's been in the navy he's trained you know right lock and load is one of his favorite quotes and and I, I don't know if I want to tell you what happens in his yeah, attempt. Don't go, yeah, you don't have to go too into detail. Okay, that's fine. So, that. so then he has to leave town, <laughs> and and he has to run away and be smart. And this is not the day of cell phones and right. You know, this is analog time. You know, it's not the day of cash machines and cell phones and all the digital tracking you they do now. Where this takes have place to in the eighties, right? Eighties. Yeah, it takes yeah. place in the eighties. And he actually is involved. He goes and visits the Austin P9 strike uh, from his perch at the YMCA. He goes with some unionists from Chicago. Many, many unionists from all over went to support the P9 strikers in Austin, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, this is one of the big scenes in the book. Uh, and and he goes there with these other people. And that, that was a massive strike for Minnesota. Um, and a lot of leftists from Minneapolis went there and helped feed people and fund people and transport people and all that stuff. And of course, the strike was eventually de uh, defeated. But then he goes up to Minneapolis, he gets involved and in, he's close to some people who are socialists. They get into trouble. Then he had he, in the old days, people used to take buses <laughs> places. <laughs> what? Yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> and they still do. Oh, yeah. S especially if you want to be transported by cash. You, mm -hmm. you know, you if you go by cash and you don't want anybody tracking you, you go on a bus. And um, that's actually the the Jack Reacher series does that too. He always travels by bus. Mm. Anyway, that's a that's a current movie. So and then he go he gets up to Ely and he gets involved in some illegal activities up there. And if you know anything about Uncle Tom's cabin, you know and and the Civil War and the black slaves, to get away from slavery, you actually had to get to Canada mm -hmm. because the, the the slaves could have the fugitive slave law if they got caught even in Minnesota. You know, we know right. that from Dred Scott and, you know, and he spent Dred Scott spent time at uh, Fort Snelling. Mm -hmm. And so eventually he's got his eye on Canada because the police are after him, the detectives. And one of the detectives name is Le Green. And if you translate into French, it's called Javert. <laughs> so, it's a connection to Les Mis, who is the mm -hmm. relentless 
detective going after the stolen bread. Right. In, and, and this is one of the nuggets in the book. I mean, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say these things, but anyway, I am going to say it. So that's all right. And there's actually a loaf of bread in his car. Mm -hmm. And people wonder what's that loaf of bread doing? Right. <laughs> I mean, these are who's who's going to notice this shit? But hey, not, you know, excuse me, this stuff. Somebody in the future, they're going <laughs> to analyze this stuff in detail. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. Say, they're going go, okay. to use AI to analyze, and they're going to say, "I found all five hundred and eighty-seven <laughs> nuggets within this book." Yeah, I guess um, they call them nuggets. So eventually, he gets to Ely. He's got another romance up there an unusual romance and he learns how to use a snowmobile. And if you don't know what this is in the, in the North in the great white North, Minnesota, Wisconsin, at least probably Northern Michigan, they do. And it's called water cross now. And he uses his snowmobile in a very unusual way. Um, and, and uh, so those are just some, like hints of what happens right. in Ely and Ely is right on the Canadian border under the uh, boundary waters, uh, a bunch of lakes uh, for people who don't, don't know Minnesota. Up in Canada, they call them snow machine. They do. Yeah. Snow machines instead yeah. of snowmobiles. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, you know, the regional differences. You know, so. I am also yeah, a Canadian. So, you know, oh, okay. I'm always got to give props to the Canadians. Yeah. Um, well, I really appreciate you speaking with me. Uh, you know, is there anything else that you want to share about the book or any of your other upcoming writings or? Uh, yeah, let me, let me talk about, I'm working on, I finished a book probably a year and a half ago called Selling Away. Okay. Trying to get it published. It, it features a, uh, a mixed couple. One is a white collar worker. One's a blue collar worker. The blue collar worker goes on a successful strike in here in Minneapolis. The white collar worker has some extreme machinations at her job uh, and uh, grim issues. Mm. And it it's it, it it it's set in Minneapolis. And it it's a again another class conscious book. I'm trying to write proletarian, absolutely working class fiction that people can identify with that they live through. And they realize that this is a topic of of, uh, of understanding. And the book I'm working on now, and I'm stuck halfway through, is called the Book of Revolution. Mm. And this all each book has little nuggets that show up in the next book. Usually a character, or nice. they'll talk about a character. So they it's like Alfred Hitchcock. There's something that connects all three books, both in time. The book selling away is in. Uh, 2018 and uh, book of revolution is 20 20 uh, 2030s somewhere in there sure. it's a speculative fiction what's going to happen nice. in the united states or uh and and i'm stuck halfway through and i'm working on it this weekend so well i really appreciate you speaking with me and uh thanks so much for your time greg and uh i'm sure we'll talk again sometime okay uh, we we always do so. Okay, well, I appreciate the, the interest, and I yeah, hope you absolutely. enjoyed the book. <laughs> Great to read the book. Yeah, I liked it, and uh, okay. I like how it really picks up uh, it picks up speed as it goes along, which I, I really like. It seems to, like the pace the pace quickens, and I think that's done really well. Good, thank you. Well, you have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Greg. All right, bye bye. bye. And that is our special interview. Thanks for listening. Solidarity. This has been a Socialist News and Views special interview.